Uh, thank you. Thank you all for attending today's talk. Uh, sorry, we just got interrupted and butted in by this cheeky Antipodeans, but we're now back on track. Um, I'm presenting Manita Gold. This is a Toronto-based, Ontario-focused gold development company, creating one of the largest undeveloped gold projects in North America. I do point out there are forward-looking statements in this presentation. Now, Manita, it's focused in the Timmins camp. Uh, Timmins is a tier one location, tier one jurisdiction. It's a great location, safe jurisdiction, jurisdiction uh, experienced workforce. We're only 100 kilometers from a major mining center, right on good infrastructure, roads, all of the, uh, all of the things you require in developing a major project. We have a very large resource, 4.5 million ounces indicated, 8.3 million ounces inferred gold resources existing immediately adjacent to a major regional highway. We have both high-grade underground and bulk tonnage open mineable. Robust economics, we just completed a PEA, a scoping study last September, and we have size, location. We also have a pipeline of projects. We have several other projects in the pipeline, uh, gold adjacent, previously mined, high grade at surface. We're bringing those into the pipeline now. We also have battery metals. We have nickel and copper projects, which will also be part of our future. The, the PEA itself came out with an NPV, 5% discount rate. Uh, at $1,600 gold after tax, just under 1.1 billion Canadian, 32% IRR, and a 2.6 year payback. That's 261,000 ounces a year for 11 years, uh, 811 cash cost, uh, and 1,004 all in sustaining cost. Um, that produced the mine plan captures just over 5 million ounces of the total resources. So we have plenty of scope to upsize this project, to expand our production profile, but we right-size this for the company. This is something we can build, permit, and uh, fund. We've already completed eight, uh, 100,000 meters, actually, of infill drilling, nearly 80,000 meters last year, and over 20,000 already this year alone. We're well on the way with our EIA and we're well on the way with the permitting. So we're, we've, we're well advanced with our PEA, with our PFS, pre-feasibility studies and moving the project forward. Um, just a few key points about the, the PEA. Um, we pushed back as much capital as we could. We don't start the underground development till year one. Remember, this is both a combined underground operation, high grade bulk tonnage, uh, mineable long hole open stoping operation combined with large scale open pits. We push back the, the capital costs. We do lease to buy. We had we had bids from Caterpillar on that. This was more favorable in regards to reducing upfront capital. We, we start in the highest grade area, lowest strip, no pre-strip required. We start in the garrison area. This is a project we acquired two years ago specifically for this process. And this provides us lower upfront capital um, so 520 million up front, 890 sustaining. And the average grade for those first uh, 11 years, 1.3 grams per tonne. Um, this is Timmins, is Canada's most prolific gold mining camp, 85 million ounces historical production. We have a controlling um, land package in, in the camp. This is quite unique for a junior. The junior has been there for a long time, Manita and um, there's people in this audience who were part of the, the team that actually put this land package together. And we're very thankful for that. It's on major highways, airline uh, links, multiple airlines a day with newly announced passenger train service to the area, power, electricity, and skilled workforce. We own everything 100%. It's on either padded and mining clays or state claims. So we own both the surface and underlying mineral rights. Um, and we have no royalties on the Golden Highway portion, so 80% of the resource is no royalties, and only a 1.5% royalty on the remaining uh, 20%. 102 million shares outstanding. Um, our current cash position, about 8.5 million Canadian. A good list of institutional uh, owners, most of the large gold funds in North America, Canada, and US uh, shareholders, and a very good extensive list of um, the top analysts in North America. The team, that we've built together a project delivery team, lots of uh, experience here, lots of skills. This is a very difficult thing to do in this current environment. And we've put together some very experienced hands here, both who have developed, uh, funded, 
and operated large large scale gold mines, as well as uh, the board, which has extensively been expanded in regards to strength depth. And in the background, a lot of new policies, procedures, and all about governance in regards to the company developing from a junior into a major producer. On the eastern side of the camp, we're the major landholder. This is the Timmins camp. We're about 100 kilometers east of the city of Timmins, multiple operations in the area, Newmont's there, uh, Agnico Eagle, Pan American Silver, Alamos, all, all with large producing gold mines. Um, we have a commanding position. We have a pipeline of projects. There's the Bofonte area, the Gold Pike area. We're looking to add to the Golden Highway project itself. Golden Highway itself is wide open. We've only drilled nine kilometers of a 17 kilometer strike length. We have 12.8 million ounces and we see the excellent opportunity to significantly add to that, both at surface and open pits. And of course, only two of the projects have we drilled to any depth. So there's only two have been tested for underground resource potential. And we know these are orogenic gold deposits. They, they, will, they will go for kilometers. Um, we also have the, some nickel and copper projects we're looking to, to put together. The project itself, um, we're well on the way with our ESG. Um, ESG programs will have our inaugural ESG report out for 2022 this year. Um, we've got um, expiration agreements with the made with all of the First Nations. There's one major group, Ab Abitibi and Assiniboine, and two under the Waban Tribal Council. We have a pre-IBA signed with Abitibi and Assiniboine, and we'll we have well on our way with our EIA. We've got over three years baseline data on the core parts of the project. Um, there's no red flags, nothing of, of worry, has, of concern has been discovered. We'll wrap, wrap that up this year and we'll have all of that in for permitting with an initial project description currently targeted for the second half of this year. The project itself occurs immediately adjacent to Highway 101, consists of two ma major areas. These are both sedimentary basin to miscommune age basins, banded iron formation association, three open pits in the garrison area, two large open pits in the Golden Highway area, and two large underground um, resources in the Golden Highway area. As mentioned, we've, we've drilled about nine kilometers of a 17 kilometer strike length. The remainder remains open, but we feel we've drilled out a, a core, enough ounces now to start moving this project forward. The resources themselves, they add up four point, these add to the top, 4.3 million ounces indicated, uh, 8.5 inferred, and a total of about 2 million ounces underground and about 10.8 um, inf uh, in inferred, uh, sorry, under uh, open pit. The project has expanded considerably over the years. Um, we've grown uh, rapidly over the last two years from 1.3 million ounces just two and a half years ago, three years ago to 12.8 um, uh, currently. This is a screenshot, a grab of the of the actual development. These are the mineable resources in the PA. This is the 15.1 for possible 12.8. This shows the early years in blue, uh, about one, 1 million ounces from Garrison. We mined high grade there the first five years. We then transition into the Golden Highway area while we've, we've developed the underground at Golden Highway. And we then developed the larger open pits after pre-stripping at Golden Highway. The garrison starter pits pay off the capital. Remember, 2.6 year payback. Uh, pay for the underground development, brings in that higher grade, maintains that 1.3 gram per ton head grade, and pre-strips the open pits at Golden Highway. Uh, significantly uh, attractive capital costs and, ca and operating costs, 811 uh, cash cost, as mentioned, the first 11 years. 1,004 cap, um, all in sustaining. We have 520 million upfront capital initial and 890 sustaining, life of mine. The project, um, about a $32, million, $32 per tonne average uh, processing cost um, and about 1.9 billion life of mine after tax free cash flow. Remember, the stopes are wide, they're large, they, they average nine meters in width. So this is bulk tonnage underground mining. All of the underground mines in the camp operate long hole open stoping. So this is a, you know, there's not a technique that none of the consultants are not very aware of. Contractors or um, is new to them, ground conditions are good. Um, 
2.6 year payback, um, good cash flow those first 11 years, year 12, we do run out of underground resources. This is one of the things we'll be looking at to expand once we get into operation. Um, remember, there's no point now in drilling out ounces that won't be mined for another, you know, till the 12th year of production. Sensitivities, extremely sensitive to the gold price. You can see today's gold price, well over $2 billion valuation. Um, and less sensitive to cash costs and cap and uh, operating costs. So very robust, strength, strong and robust all the way down to 12, 1300 US dollar gold. The project itself, you can see here, this is the current uh, situation at, at Garcon. This is the garrison starter pits. There's already pits there. They've been mined historically, 1.55 grams per tonne. 96.5% recovery, the stockpiled ore there. We can be mining ore from one day. There's, opera, there's actually mining permits in place already there. First five years, a million ounces. Cash flow as well, low strip ratio, good grade. Then that pays for the much larger Golden Highway. Remember, 80% of our ounces are in Golden Highway. You can see here the only, the only two of the areas have been drilled to depth. Um, these are... The Westerway, which is open, uh, Southwest is open. We showed in some of our infield drilling the ability to expand these. The high grade at Westerway is the initial open pit, 1.55 grams per ton. We then, the first years from five, years six to 11, we're in the blue, and that's phase one, and that's what we're looking to bring through the PFS. This shows the mining profile, shows the underground coming on. The first five years is in gar garrison, that the remaining years in the Golden Highway, which are the, the larger part of the ounces. And as mentioned, the grade, the profile does drop off the year 11, but that's only because the, we have not fully drilled out the underground resources. We've got lots of uh, drill indication that those are there. Robust project, 261,000 ounces a year, the first 11 years. Lots of opportunities to um, upgrade the uh, actual resources. This is quite unique for a project. We have a significant amount of historical core not sampled. We've been putting press releases out on that. What that does is add ounces where there is currently no ounces. Some of the pits were not drilled out. We're doing that now, so we'll be adding ounces uh, there where it's currently considered waste. We've got um, upside on the process flow sheet, the recovery. We used a conservative 91.3%. And we are also looking at, at optimizing the timing of the decline as well as the, pro the project layout. We've been doing, putting out good guidance on the infill drilling. As mentioned, there's over 80,000 meters was being drilled last year alone on infill. This is resource upgrade inferred to indicate as part of the PFS. Uh, we've, we've put 70,000 meters of a total of 80,000 results out. There's more to come, plus drilling from this year and the historical core resampling. From a valuation point, we're, we're trading at a value of under $8 an ounce, significant upside here, looking this just compared to our peer group, trading at less than 0.15 NAV, again, significant upside for investors. Uh, looking at our capital versus uh, production profile, again, very attractive, noting the very good location we're in. We're the largest underground developed project in the best location, best jurisdiction. So again, significant upside with the current movement in gold, we see ourselves highly leveraged. We have behaved well in regards to the share, um, the peer group. We have behaved well over the last two years. We we're, we're, of course struggled the last month or two with the current uh, markets, but we see significant upside here beyond that. Um, and this is really the timetables we talked about. Um, finishing the infill drilling, Commencing the PFS, well, finishing the PFS midway through next year, initial project description, feasibility next year, and then doing the detailed project description. Uh, remember, permitting starts with that initial permitting uh, project description. Moving through those in parallel with the feasibility study, um, detailed engineering, and then it's a sort of a three to five year period for permitting. So that should dovetail in well with our technical studies. So thank you. And